And it says, in the same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking in the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked along, they were talking about everything they had, that had happened. And as they talked and discussed the things, Jesus himself came and began walking with them. So, once again, he's what? He's transported Transport. right there. Yeah. Right there in front of him. Yeah. So, you know, what better example to show us <laughs> that this can occur than Jesus himself right. Right. walking this out and doing it? Right. <laughs> he says, you know, so I, I don't believe that he showed us this in a boisterous prideful matter, like, look at what I can do. I'm Jesus. I right. can be true. No, I think he showed us that because he wanted us to grasp that faith in that and say, now, wait a minute. If the Father will do that to me, he'll do it to you. Yeah. But as I said, I, I don't think that we, we think of those things like that because we can get in our car and go where we want to go and get on the bus, the train, the plane, or whatever. We just don't stop and think about the Holy Spirit moving our physical body. So when you're being transported physically or translated in spirit is when you're being taken away to another place to deliver a message or a prophetic word. Mm. Philip in the book of Acts was transported to another location in the flesh in an instant. His whole body, spirit, and soul were transported. And that's in Acts chapter 8, verses 38 through 40. Let's look at those. Let's get a little scripture background in here. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. And meanwhile, Philip found himself further north. He preached the good news there in every town and along the way until he came to Sarah. Think about that for a second. <laughs> One moment, he is... <laughs> In the water, because if you go up to verse 34, he is in the water with his eunuch, and he's baptizing him. And all of a sudden, when they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit didn't even give Philip time to say, Bless you, brother. I'm heading somewhere <laughs> else. I got another right. place to be. Right. It says instantly he was snatched right up and taken someplace else. Mm. And it says that, that, that the, the gentleman says, and, and, and the eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Now, you tell me, it doesn't go into this eunuch to where he was like, well, what happened to him? How did it occur? Well, what in the world's going on? Is this witchcraft? Is this mysticism? Is this magic? What in the world is going on? It just shows that in a, in a moment... In a moment, God can snatch us and put us someplace else. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I live in the expectation of truly walking out these things. We only got one place to show faith here, and it's on earth, because you ain't going to need faith in heaven. Right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. We ain't going to see everything there. We're not going we're not gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, to we're not gonna have to have faith there. Everything will be there. We'll be no reason to have faith there. So we have the opportunity while we are occupied, while we are standing firm for what God has put inside of us to accomplish with our lives yeah. in partnership with Him to walk some things out that are supposed to be out of the ordinary, that are supposed to be supernaturally impossible. Right. Impossibilities. When he said, all things are possible with me, I think that transportation, translation, and being caught up in the Spirit was part of that. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I don't think he was just saying that to be saying it. I think he gave us these examples of what was taking place. Nowhere in here does it say that Philip said, Lord, take me. Mm. 
can you, Lord, I don't want to walk. Can you just transport me over here to the next village? Because I'm a little tired. My feet got some sores on them. Lord, you know I've been out here hustling. Yeah. Can you transport me to the next place? Didn't happen. It, it, this is what you're talking about suddenly. And when they came up out of the water, it says the Spirit of the Lord, I love it, snatched him. Snatched Philip. And what? And Philip went away. And he found himself on the northern side. It didn't say that Philip got there and went, well, I wonder why the Lord did that. I can just see him going, hmm, all right. I've been told about this. Yeah. Lord, you just snatched me right out of here I am. Glory to God. Go on to the next one. And went on with his mission. See, I don't think they were in an all state like we are here when God does miracles. Mm. Mm. I think it was an expectation that God would do those things, dear. I think it was an expectation that if I show up somewhere doing anything that pertains to God and God is in the movement of it, something, something is going to happen great. Yeah, wow. Yeah. They didn't have to be pumped up. They right. were pumped up all the time. <laughs> they went expecting. Yeah. They got out and they were like, oh, I can't wait to see what God's going to do today. Oh, my gosh, what's he going to do today? Where are you taking me today, Lord? Where are you snatching me out of and taking me today? Yeah. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have a humdrum, boring life. They believed. Their faith was active. And that's what I love about Hebrews chapter 11. It shoots adrenaline through your body when you go through and you read all those saints that were before us. And they could have at any time said, God, I don't want to do it anymore. But they chose to take the hard path. Yeah. They didn't resist him. They didn't say, this is too hard. They didn't say, I don't want to do it. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to do this anymore, God. They were determined yeah. to give him glory. Jesus. They were determined to run their race. They were determined at all costs that if it cost them their head to be chopped off, if it cost them to lose everything, if all they had was nothing but him, that was all they cared about. Mm -hmm. They had no possession, no material things that they leaned on that took his place. It was Jesus or nothing for them. Mm -hmm. Jesus or nothing. Their faith was at a level that I only hope I can attain one day come in my on. walk with Christ. Yes, come on. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I want to attain that level of faith. I want to attain it so that when I look at my life and look at things around me, nothing disturbs me, nothing knocks me off course, nothing deters me, rage doesn't come up inside of me because somebody did something to me or I didn't get a certain thing or something didn't happen. And I'm just so elated with the presence of God and so filled with the knowledge of knowing what, who He is and how he loves me, that all I want is him. Jesus. 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 Help us, Lord. Yes. Mm. That's why. You know, when you talk about this translation, transportation, being caught up in the Spirit, they're all wonderful things. But they all lead to one thing keeping our eyes on Him. See, that's why it's an invitation. Because God is looking. I believe Jesus is walking around. He's looking for someone that says, I'm, Lord, I'm ready to be invited into that. Not preoccupied with everything that what? That would block that. I can't receive an invitation for those things because I'm too preoccupied with the world and the things around me. Focus on you, Jesus. Stay focused on you. When you look at it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 and 4, you know, Paul was an example of what he was saying. He was saying, um, I mean, it's, I think it's chapter 2, first, second Corinthians chapter 2, where Paul was caught up in the Spirit. I remember where it is. First Corinthians 12, I think. 
No, that's in the sphere, right? Uh, 2 Corinthians, yeah, it's 2 Corinthians 12. Sorry about that, guys. 2 Corinthians 12, verses, um, starting with verse 1, where Paul is saying, Look, this boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about the visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up, come on now, in the third heaven, 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside of my body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so astonishing that they cannot be expressed in words. Things no human is allowed to tell. Don't you want an invitation like that? Yes. Come on, don't we want to be caught up in the spirit like that? Where well, the Lord takes us in, caught up. We come out of it and we shake our hands going, wait a minute, do I still have my fingers and my arms? Okay, I got all of me. But what happened? Was I caught up in the spirit, Michael? Did you get caught up in the spirit? Can you imagine waking up one morning, Michael, and you wake up on your bed and you look around and you have this haze on you and all of a sudden you feel like you're coming back from someplace you've been and you saw something and you're like, <laughs> However you choose to do it. Being so focused on him to where you said, Lord, <laughs> I'm just whatever you want to do, you just go ahead and do it. Paul says, I don't know how I was supposed to, but he was an example of being what? Caught up in the spirit. And then we look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Start with verse 16. And you know, you, you, you if you start with verse 13, the hope of the resurrection, where he's talking about it even in verse 13. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know that what will happen to believers who have died, so you'll not grieve like people who have no hope. Mm. Come on, there's a lot of people who need to hear that scripture. Yep. Yeah. Grieving. People still grieving over somebody that's been gone home rejoicing in the Lord years ago. He says, well, since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, come on now, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living with the Lord, when the Lord returns, will not meet him ahead of those who died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet call of God, First, the believers who have died will raise up from their grave. Come on now. And then together with them, we are who are still alive, remain on the earth, will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. <laughs> and then we'll know the Lord forever. So how about that? Christians, caught up to see the Lord. Come on now. I'm not talking about being caught up to see the Lord just at that time. I want to be caught up to see the Lord now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, come on, man. Wherever, Lord. Wherever you, however you want to do it. Translation, translation, it doesn't matter. Being caught up in the Spirit. And then you look at Ezekiel, chapter 3. These are scriptures we're familiar with, but I think to feed our faith, you know, we need to go back and look at them again. As to realize how real this is. That this isn't just something that can happen every blue moon. This is something that God wants to what? Wants us to partake in. Oh, help us. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. You got it, Bethany? Yeah. Can you read it for me? Pop that out there. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and then I heard behind me a great thunder, thunderous voice. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his, from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels beside them, and a great thunderous noise. Mm. So what did the Lord do to him? So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, 